Hi, I'm Arthi Shaw, Executive Editor for Provoke Media, and I'm host for today's episode. So the global pandemic that we're still very much immersed in has put healthcare at center stage. But even before 2020, healthcare was quickly ascending to be one of the most complex and compelling areas of communications. At this very moment, we're seeing the dynamic of health tech, providers, pharma, policymakers, and other stakeholders sort of interplay at, at a global level. And it's breathtaking and, and also kind of intimidating. Um, so with that in mind, we partnered with Real Chemistry, formerly W2O, on a new series called Healthy Bites. And in each episode, we bring on a healthcare expert to provide sort of quick and digestible what you should know cheat sheet to help you stay abreast and ahead of sort of the rapidly changing healthcare communications landscape. And because healthcare is truly at the center stage of society and culture right now, um, we hope that these conversations can help you no matter what your day-to-day -day role is. Um, you know, spending these five to 10 minutes with these experts on the show will be well worth your while um, and make you smarter and more informed and hopefully provide some insights to make you a more connected, creative and engaged practitioner. So on today's episode, we're launching the series with Emily Poe. Uh, she's group president of integrated communications at Real Chemistry. Um, if that's not impressive enough, Emily's first real job was apparently acting alongside Burt Lancaster and Macaulay Culkin in a movie. And uh, you, all can, you all can search through IMBD and find out more details on that. Um, and, you know, uh, the focus of today's conversation won't be that movie. It will be, um, <laughs> it will be how to be a data-driven communicator. Welcome, Emily. Thanks, Arthi. Nice to be here. Yeah, yeah. And so... You know, let's let's just start with um, you know. There's this phrase that's thrown around a lot. You know, being a data-driven communicator, and 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 data-driven can be defined in so many ways. Um, how do you define being a data-driven communicator? So I and and we all I would say here at Real Chemistry define a data-driven communicator as one who asks for and knows how to use data to generate actionable insights to guide communications. So fundamentally, I'd say it's an evolution of what communicators have been, or at least should have always been doing. So rather than creating strategies based on a gut feeling or, or even better, maybe on some desk research and a handful of audience interviews, we're creating strategies from a much deeper understanding of our audiences as authentic, um, um, authentic people, groups, or as individuals. Right. Technology has advanced um, our, our ability to understand these audiences in, in a whole new way. Right. So it's sort of this evolution from sort of this gut based instinct to kind of using the technology and the tools mm -hmm. that we have to sort of inform some of those decisions. And I just quick one follow up on that. Mm -hmm. How do you sort of integrate that sort of gut instinct, which is quite powerful, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. With the data, because I know that's been a, a, a question that we've always been asking ourselves in, in this industry for the last few years. Totally. So as data-driven communicators, what I would say is we should be rolling up our sleeves, digging into the available data to generate those insights, then using our experience to develop um, impactful and measurable communications plans. So using our, our experience, that gut, as sort of a sounding board for what we're seeing in the, in the, um, in the data and using that to guide how we're activating. Right. So, you know, you had mentioned that there's been a lot of advancements um, in this space. And so I'm curious, you know, what advancements are you most excited about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are a few that I find really exciting. Um, the first one is personalization. So the ability to find more precise digital audiences faster. We've really refined our approach to audience analytics to better capture not just how our audiences behave with regards to a specific brand or topic, but how they behave digitally overall in the world. So in our world in healthcare, we're looking at, yes, what does Dr. Shaw share on social um, with regard to you know, Dr. Shaw's new research, but also understanding her digital behavior um, on the whole. So where does she read her news from? What topics does she search from? How does she behave as, as a person outside of her professional realm? Um, all from publicly available data, of course, but it allows us to uh, frame um, any communication within the context of what may resonate with Dr. Shaw as a person. Yes. Um, and then 
The second, and this has been very powerful for us, the ability to integrate data sources together to get a broader holistic picture of a patient or more broadly, any purchasing journey. So we can use uh, real world data like medical claims to better understand a patient's journey, which we can overlay with other digital data sources to get a better understanding of where and how we can um, reach and activate audiences at the right time and in the most effective way through their journey. So for example, being very precise about where we would um, engage um, digitally with a stage one breast cancer patient understanding um, what channels they went to throughout their diagnosis, where they will likely go to um, in different lines of treatment. This allows us to better create messages that will resonate for them at various points in their journey. And our acquisition of the Swoop and IPM.ai platform really helped advance this offering. It's been really exciting to, to see um, the power that's come out of that platform. The other area, and it's it's one we're really passionate about is using data to better understand traditionally underserved patient populations. Um, so because of all the data that we have, we can find microcosms of populations and communities that might not be represented um, with tr more traditional approaches. Uh, they might get lost, really. We can spend time in their ecosystem so that we can use appropriate cultural context, expectations. Um, their activations are representative of more lived experiences of patients um, in their own realities and, and not just that generic patient experience. Um, we're using that in clinical trial recruitment. That's been that's been also really exciting. Yes, yes. Um, well, you know, this is maybe a good segue into into my my next question, and that's you know, I mean, where do you find that data has the most impact? Is it in that planning stage? Is it sort of pivoting a campaign, sort of at the midpoint, saying, "Hey, look, this is working." Mm -hmm. this isn't working. Yep. Or is it to ultimately evaluate the performance? And I'd love to get a little bit more context as to why. So th that one's a tough question, sort of like asking a parent to choose, you know, their favorite child, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I would say that if you don't start with data, um, then you're unlikely to get the most out of your campaign or program. So you want to use data to understand those audiences. Um, I, I, you know, I'm repeating myself, but I sort of can't say it enough um, because we want to understand which messages will resonate and motivate them, um, where they can get content, where they digest that content, who influences them to take action, and, and on and on. I mean, that's a critical part of any program setup in my experience. But it is also critical to evaluate performance, um, especially when you want to connect communications to true business impact. So the stronger your measurement plan, especially in communications where you want to go beyond that somewhat softer, more traditional PR metric, um, the more likely you're actually going to be able to see how you're impacting the business or whatever other objective your communications program has. Um, and then you mentioned pivot. And, and so in a, in a program, a pivot really, really uh, requires data. So a pivot point is where you want to both evaluate the performance of a, of a program or activation to date, right, with your data. But then you also want to use data to adjust your strategy for moving forward. So as a communicator, I would never pivot a plan without digging into the data. The data should guide you in how you're adjusting your strategy. And so ultimately in my mind, you know, any sophisticated um, communicator should be insisting on having data at, at any of those points um, because that will be what will allow you to make the most of your resources and have the strongest impact uh, for your brand or program. I, I always suspect that that pivot is sort of the most underused application of data in our business. Mm -hmm. I noticed when, when we get our award submissions in, you know, there's always a lot of data, you know, around the planning mm -hmm. and a lot of data around the evaluation, but the judges are always impressed when a, a campaign or an entry mm -hmm. has a pivot point that is driven yep. by data. And they say, you know what? And we realized this wasn't going to work or this wasn't working because of X. And so we shifted in this direction. And, and I, it, it always impresses the judges, which makes me think that it's it's still sort of the most underused application at this point. It, it, it is, and it shows that you're paying attention, right? It shows that you're paying attention and it shows that you understand what's working and isn't working. You don't have to necessarily always throw out everything. Um, but I, I think that that is one of the most important places and, it, and it's sort of everything coming together at one time. Right, right. Well, Emily, I feel like I could I could keep talking to you about this, but I, I think we're going to have you back on Healthy Bites again. So we'll definitely awesome. continue this this conversation. But but staying true to our pledge of, of keeping these nice and and, and sweet and short, um, we're going to close the conversation. Thank you for your time, you. and we will be back soon with another episode of Healthy Bites. Great, thank you. <laughs>